everyone knows that there's two different stories or two people from the Bible. And they're both examples of how being young doesn't have to mean you have little faith. So key texts that you can pull up if you want to be ready have your Bible at your device as well. For when we get to those parts, 1 Samuel 17 and 1 Timothy 4 and 12. So as I said earlier, this is our first week of FCA starting up, and my prayer for this group is for it to be a spark of revival on our campus, um, and just to lead to a greater Christian presence and influence just throughout the school. And so we're talking about biblical examples of young people doing great things to the Lord, because I believe that every young person has the potential to do so, and I just want to give it encouraging examples to uplift you guys and get you ready to do that as well. Uh, our first example is David. Do any of you guys know anything about him? Um, he was a great king. Yes, he was a king. You guys remember Joshua? No. Uh, yeah, so he wrote the book of Psalms. He was a warrior, and he was known as a man after God's own heart. Other than that, he was a king when he was 30. But our story is way before he was a king. This was when he was just a young man. Um, so he was the eighth and youngest son of a guy named Jesse. At home, he was a shepherd. So that's like a lonely and dangerous kind of job back then. It wasn't as easy as it would be today because he had to fight out bears and lions and tigers. Oh and my. Lions, you know? um, so he, he was, they were looked down upon for his type of role he had as a shepherd. It was a looked down upon thing in Israeli society because it was unclean. Not just literally, because you're in the fields, like, with wild animals and blood and all different kinds of things, but religiously as well, with the Judaism and all the stuff that goes with that. So he was he would not have been a prime member of society, because he came from a poor family and he was a shepherd, yet God was still able to use him. And so the, what the time period we're talking about today is during the war against the Philistines. So... Most of you probably, if you've been to church, know the story of David and Goliath. And that's the story that we're going to be talking about today. So he was going back and forth between the battlefield and his home to deliver food and supplies to his brothers who were in the army. He was also going back and forth because he was serving as an armor bearer and musician for King Saul. Well, so this war was coming down to a single fight. This was like the title battle. This, they were really, it was really one fight one giant, there was a giant named Goliath who, if you imagine, this guy was like over nine feet tall. So the tallest guys in the NBA, Boban and Taco Ball, he would have made them look like midgets. Like, he was huge. And he was strapped. He had like gold armor all over. And so nobody wanted to fight him. They were all too scared. Like all all the men in the arm, every time they'd hear him come down and give his 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 challenge to the Israel army, they would all try and hide. So David comes in, he hears, he hears this challenge, and he's like, what's going on? Are we really going to let someone disrespect our God like that? And so when, when he hears this challenge, he's not even 20. He couldn't be in the army. He wasn't a member. He wasn't trained. But he knew that if someone's going to disrespect his God, he's going to fight. So his fellow Israelites and even his brothers mocked him because he was young and because he was a shepherd, but he still chose to accept the challenge. Um, this is today's first key scripture, 1 Samuel 17, 32 through 37. Uh, is there anyone who wants, wants to read this? I can read it if you guys don't want to. No? Okay. All right. Cool, guys. Okay. Verse 32. Then David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servants will go and fight with the, this Philistine. And Saul, and, Saul, and Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth, and he is a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep his father's sheep, and when a lion or a bear came to, and took a lamb out of the flock, I went after it and struck it, and delivered the lamb from its mouth. 
and when it rose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defiled the army of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivers delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. All right. So there's a, a few key things that really stick out to me when we look at this text. The first thing is, so David, he goes to Saul. And Saul, as you don't know, is the king. And uh, uh, so, and he, 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 even he's doubting David because David's a little dude. Like, he tries, he tries on Saul's armor. It doesn't fit. He's small and stature. He's not someone you pick to fight a nine foot tall young. I'll add to that, he is young. And this guy had been a trained fighter since he was young. So he's inexperienced. His experience, he says, is that he's been a shepherd, so he's fought animals, and God has kept him safe through all of that. So he has faith that God will keep him safe once again because God's not going to let someone defy him, and he will deliver him. So having that's, that's the key thing, in my opinion. He had the right mindset. So he approaches him humbly, and his belief in God outweighs his youth and his inexperience. He went to the front lines with just some stones and a slingshot and knocked down this huge trash-talking giant to the ground and cuts off his head. This made the Israelites able to run off the Philistines. He did this while his whole entire rest of his army, who were older than him, more experienced than him, they were all afraid. Israel had their own king. His name was Saul. He would have been their equivalent of Goliath. He was described as tall and standing head and shoulders over his men. So he's the guy that you would have pictured as the opponent. But when the time came, it was little David, who the people believed was right around our age. They think he was somewhere in the 14 to 18 range. It's really hard to tell exactly with documentation from that time period. But yeah, he would have been right around our age. And he was who God chose as his champion in this fight. So don't let anyone ever tell you that God can't use you, you might be, you might seem young, you might seem inexperienced, but that's exactly who God loves to use. If you have your heart on fire, He'll use you. Our second person is Timothy, and um, so Timothy, if, if you guys don't know, now this we're in the New Testament now. We've previously been in the Old Testament, and there's two New Testament letters bearing his name. Uh, some background information: He had a Jewish mother and a Greek father. And he was known to have put his faith in the Lord at a young age after seeing the godly example of his mother and his grandma. So he, he's mostly known for his ministry work with Paul. He was a, one of the leaders of the early church. He was really someone who was mentored and helped grow, grow up um, under the influence of Paul. He'd been a faithful Christian when he was young, probably in his late teens or early 20s. Like I said, the documentation back then wasn't very good. Uh, he joined Paul's ministry. And he was he was trusted enough that sometimes he'd be left behind or sent to strengthen some of the churches throughout Asia Minor, uh, which is like kind of like Turkey and Greece today. Um, and he would continue to help Paul even after he, Paul was in prison, and he continued to serve after Paul's death. So Paul looked at him as a true son of the faith. The interesting thing about Timothy, so you're probably thinking, man, this guy sounds like a superhero of the faith. Like, this guy sounds really impressive. He was able to lead all these people to Christ. Well, he was actually known to have had a hesitant, reserved personality. And yet God still used him to share the word with, like, millions of people and to stop false teachers who were trying to pull people away from God. So you might be shy. You might be reserved. You might not think, you might think, I don't, I don't talk very good. I mean, I don't think God can use me. I don't know. I don't feel like I can witness to anybody. But God can still use you. No matter if you're you're afraid, if you don't feel like you have the words, God can still use you. And he would love to do so. 
So our, our second scripture, I'll just read this one, is let no one despise you for your youth, but be an example of believers in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. All right, so Timothy was being warned by Paul in this verse, in, in a part of a larger letter that um, Paul was sending to him to give him some advice about how to be a leader and to lead the church. And so he was telling him, don't let the older generations dismiss you simply because of your age or despise you because of your talents. I know this is something that always happens. There's always been going to be people who are older than you who are not going to look down on you and think that you don't know what you're doing because you're young. But he was saying that the best way for to stop the people who are going to say stuff about you like that is just to live out a good example. Like, through your actions, you can prove them wrong. So he's talking about fellow Christians. And through the way he acted... And his words, he was he could live out a pure and faith-filled life. So he gives him a model of how a Christian should be living as an influence, no matter their age. This is a perfect example of how any of us who's trying to serve God should try and live out like we should try and be loving. We should try and do the right thing. We should try and have faith. We should try not to get into any situations that are going to screw up our purity. So we all. So this is just a good example of how as a young person, or at any age, you really should try and live out as an example. So that gets us to my third point. What about you? We talked about David, we talked about Timothy, who were two people that from a very young age were able to do a ton of things for God. I'm not saying you have to do something crazy. I'm not, I'm not telling you to move to Africa and be a missionary. I'm not telling you to to do, yeah, kill a giant. I'm not. I'm not telling you to do something radical, but I'm telling you, as a student today, how are you going to impact others' lives? How are you going to shine God's light just in your everyday walk? And if God calls you to do something, go for it. Just do it. So if you choose to look Godward, look up and serve him diligently, he can work wonders through you. I don't, I don't think that David or Timothy, they woke up and one day and just were like, knew that God was going to, God was going to have a whole Bible story about them someday. They were just following him. So follow him and great things will happen. You may be young, you may be inexperienced, but God would love to use you. He used countless people throughout the Bible and has continued to do so to this day. I like to end this with, with a quote from Alex and Brett Harris, who wrote a book called Do Hard Things. The, two, the teen years are not a vacation from responsibility. They are the training grounds of future leaders who dare to be responsible. The choice is up to you. How will you choose to live out today and the rest of your teen years? All right, that was, that was my, uh, my little talk today. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, we just want to end this real quick. Um, we have a minute left. I'm just going to end it in prayer, unless someone else wants to volunteer to pray, and then we can go. Uh, okay, I'll pray. Dear God, thank you that we all were able to come here and fellowship together and to share your word. I know there's places throughout the world where this wouldn't be possible. I, I would just like to thank you for this platform you gave me to share, and I pray that it touched some people's hearts, and that you could all lift up young leaders throughout this school to do great things for you. And bless, bless their days and keep them healthy and safe. Amen. Amen.